Whether you just built a brand new gaming PC or you're running a five-year-old laptop, there's a few pieces of software that you should definitely download to make sure that computer is running as smooth and as fast as possible. Now, the programs I'm about to show you aren't going to overclock any of the components in your system. They're not going to make anything necessarily run faster in terms of, you know, clocks or anything like that. The real thing we're looking to do is make sure that everything is running as it's supposed to. So that means making sure that you're not over utilizing your storage devices and slowing down your computer that way, overheating components because they just need a new thermal paste application, or making sure there's no vulnerabilities on your computer by having an out of date BIOS. So let's just jump into the applications and show you guys the three pieces of software you should definitely download to make sure your computer is running as good as possible. So the first program we're going to look at is Windersstat. So this tool really enables you to visualize what is actually on your hard drive or SSD or NVMe drive. So for the most part, you might see that a drive is nearing its full capacity in File Explorer or another software tool, but Windersstat really allows you to then visualize that in a much, much simpler way. So what you'll do is first pick the drive you wanna analyze, the one that's closest to being full, most likely your C drive, that's really going to be the one that's gonna slow down Windows. Um, so if Windows is running a little bit slow and you notice that your drive is full, but you don't actually know what's taking up all of that storage, this is an awesome tool to actually see what files are utilizing the most amount of storage on your drive and then either delete them or move them onto an external drive or anything like that. So you'll notice that Winterstat is first going to just analyze the drive, find all of the folders, subfolders, and then subfiles within those folders to give you a full picture of what files are actually comprising your hard drive, SSD, or NVMe. So once it's complete, you got the little Pac-Man guys chewing away at the different files. And uh, once it's actually done, you'll see a full picture of everything on the drive visualized as a tree map. So you'll see boxes uh, for individual files and the bigger the box, the more storage it's taking up. So we'll give it a couple seconds and it will pop up eventually. And it also will uh, categorize each file type with a color. So blue is MP4 files, red is MOV files. So the majority of the stuff is footage for these YouTube videos. But you can see you can go, you can pick a big file, you can click on the box, it'll take you to that file in the directory. And then you can either delete to the recycle bin or permanently delete from Winderstat. And that'll just kind of eliminate that file completely. No saving, no, no recovering, it's gone. Um, and you can continue to do this, finding the biggest files by the biggest squares in the tree map and kind of just search through the, the hard drive uh, or SSD, whatever the storage type is, and see what are these big files taking up. And you can see this big one at the bottom is actually a system file called Hyperfile Sys that'll save pretty much a, 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 a view of what Windows should look like when you put your PC into hibernate mode. So that one will normally take up a lot of storage, um, but for the most part, you can leave that file around. It'll quicken things up if you do put your PC into hibernate mode a lot. But you really just want to kind of look around through these big squares, the big boxes, in order to see what's taking up the most space on your PC. And if you can delete the item, delete it. Otherwise, you can move it on to an external storage device so that you can access it either from a NAS uh, like I have or just an external hard drive that you can plug into your PC and gain the files or gain access to the files when you actually need to. So WinDirectStat is an awesome tool to really just dig through all of your folders, see what's taking up the most amount of storage on a device, and then remove what's unnecessary, and hopefully that will quicken Windows up a little bit more. So that's WinDirectStat, but let's jump into our second application. So for the second tool, we have HW Monitor, uh, and this is a tool from CPUID, and what it does is really give you an overall look at all of the stats of your computer. So that will be voltages, uh, core clocks, uh, voltages, frequencies, um, RPMs for fans, temperatures. It's going to give you a full overview of everything that's going on with your system. So this is an awesome tool to see if maybe your overclock is actually performing the same as what you set it up as in BIOS. So here you can see we have voltages of 1.285 on the CPU, temps at around 30 uh, C at idle. So if you have super high idle temps and your PC is throttling or anything like that, this will at least alert you and then maybe it's just a quick thermal paste reapplication and the PC is running normally again. You also have utilizations, 
core clock. So again, if you overclock to a specific frequency, 4.8 gigahertz is what I have mine set to, but if you have it up to five or 5.1, you can see whether it's actually hitting those frequencies or dropping due to throttling. Um, and then we have all of our temperatures on our RAM, our SSDs, everything. So we can see if the case cooling is adequate for the RAM, we can see if the case cooling again is adequate for our SSDs and storage devices and the likes. So we can see our NVMe is at 57C. It's a little high, but we do have a heatsink on there. Uh, case cooling is pretty good, as we can see from the RAM. So overall, there's not too much you can do. And with an NVMe, you want the temperatures a little bit high, but you can also see storage utilization as well here to see if you need to use a tool like Winderstat like we just went through. And finally, you can also see all of your GPU information. So you can see temps of your GPU in case you need to reapply thermal paste to an older GPU. Uh, you can see power utilization, uh, core frequencies, again, to make sure that it overclock is actually working as intended. So you have all this information about your motherboard, CPU, RAM, storage devices, and graphics cards. So it's an awesome tool to really make sure that everything hardware-wise is running as it's supposed to, or maybe you need to do a little bit of cleaning up of your system in order to get those numbers back in tune. And finally, we have CPU-Z. And CPU-Z is another CPU ID tool. And CPU-Z will really focus more, again, on the CPU side of things, but also the motherboard and memory as well. So here we have a full view of our CPU, down to frequencies, uh, multipliers, bus speeds, everything. You can really get a much more in detail look of your CPU and memory. You also have memory clocks here, so 1600 megahertz times two, so 3200. So if you have something that's running XMP, you'll be able to see if it's actually hitting that. And the other piece is you can actually see the BIOS version of your motherboard. So I actually had to update my BIOS. You, you know, I noticed it from CPU-Z that when I wanted to upgrade to Windows 11, the BIOS version did not support Windows 11, so I had to actually then go ahead and update my BIOS. You also have a little bit of graphics information here, um, but the other piece you have with CPU-Z is benching. So just like you can bench a system with something like Cinebench, you can also do it with CPU-Z to make sure temps are online after an overclock. But like I mentioned with the actual uh, updating of a BIOS, now that I notice that my BIOS is out of date using CPU-Z, I can go directly to the manufacturer website for my motherboard, which is a Rogue Strix Z390, go to the support material, go to the BIOS version, and I saw that my old version was 1903, and there's actually another update to the BIOS that I haven't installed, version 2004 for this motherboard. So I should probably go ahead and actually update the BIOS for this system. I haven't really had too many issues with it, but it's a good idea to just get that updated. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. And I hope you guys get subscribed to the channel, turn on post notifications, and see you guys in the next one.